Hey, this is Marvin, the one and only, because it's my phone. Um, I spent watching some Arthur, and Arthur's like a series that actually I watched growing up a lot on PBS. I feel like it's one of the few series on PBS that was actually just kind of like frank about childhood. It's kind of like, you know, it touches stuff, but not so much in a, it's so much in your face manner. It's kind of like incidental learning, you know what you want to call it. And so one episode I just watched now was the one where, um, Whereas two years, one where they have that blizzard and knocks out all their electricity and Francine doesn't do, doesn't do her report originally. So instead of doing a one-page report, she ends up having to do a three-page report about pioneers and trying to see how they survived and whatnot. It kind of makes you think a little bit about how times have changed so much since those days, you know, 1700s or 1800s or whatever hundreds those were. <laughs> and so, um, and how much easier we have things now, um, like electricity and we have, um... <clears throat> So much more entertainment, yet we're still to complain about being bored. <laughs> and um, the communication factor, you don't have to wait for letters to come in the mail. You can just instantly message someone through your phone um, or go on Facebook or whatever. Um, Facebook, you know, Twitter, you know, just have like all these things that just were not even in existence 100 years ago. Um, sometimes not even 10 years ago. Um, there's so much stuff that we have at our fingertips that you know, never would have been thought of in a million years back in those days of pioneers. You know, they probably couldn't even try to comprehend a lot of stuff that we have now. And so, um, it's kinda crazy. You just come you try to or you just come to appreciate things so much more when you realize how easy and how nice you really have everything. Um and so, um the other episode was where Mr. Rat which is actually what I remember a lot better, was the one where uh, Mr. Ratburn, his house his roof collapses due to like the snow in the previous episode. Um, I like can I like can I already call it continuity stories. I love those. <laughs> I'm big on that. And so um, I appreciate when the show tries to have a little bit of it because it makes it brings a kind of familiarity aspect to it. It's like oh, okay, I watched the episode, so this kind of links with that previous one, you know. And it's it's familiar. It makes it more the storyline a little bit more um, pulls you into a little bit more. And so. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, Mr. Ratburn has to end up staying at Arthur's house while his house, is, or while his roof is being worked on, and at first, Arthur freaks out like I would too, like any kid would at that age, you know, at seven or eight, and it's like, oh my gosh, my teacher, the person that, like, specifically is set for school, <laughs> they're going to come into my real world, my personal life, you know, outside of school, and kids are so used to things being in their place in a certain order of things. And then when you kind of like disrupt that, I mean, it's kind of like one world crossing over to the other. It's the equivalent now of my parents meeting my um, Thursday night drinking people. You know, <laughs> It just doesn't mix well. And it's, it's not meant to mix. You know, it puts me in a separate corner. And we, we do that crossover. It's like, whoa, you know, whoa. It's like kind of, kind of earth shattering a little bit. And so, um, so, like, Arthur freaks out about it, and he's like, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm going to be getting homework all the time, <laughs> and I'm going to be in my P's and Q's all the time. But come to find out, his teacher's actually, like, an ordinary guy, you know. He, you know, he likes to eat. He watches old cartoons. He does magic tricks, you know. Just, I mean, he's just, like, you know, I mean, he has a life outside of his teaching profession, and Arthur just kind of comes to learn and kind of realizes he's, you know, he's a real person <laughs> outside of just being his teacher. And, um, and of course, the side effect is that now Arthur gets a good grade on the test, and everyone just assumes that since the teacher's staying at his house, that, oh, his dad made him a case, you know, he's getting special treatment because the teacher lives at his house, blah, 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 even though it's not really the case. And then Mr. Rapper had kind of said something kind of interesting about how, um, what can you do about what people think when it just isn't true, you know? And that's true. People think all kinds of stuff, um... And they'd be dead wrong, you know, about all kinds of things. They just like speak because they can only see a certain part. They only see the outside looking in. They don't really know what's going on because they're not in the circle or in what's actually going on. So they just kind of make a hypothesis or their assessment of what's going on from their point of view. And it's so limited. And so it's really invalid, you know. But there's really nothing you can do about what they think. And so, especially when they're wrong. And so, um,. Arthur kind of freaks out about that a little bit, and eventually what happens is that <clears throat> Mr. Rapper has to end up staying <clears throat> at one of his other friend's house, and then possibly at another friend's house, and possibly at several of the kids' houses, and they all start freaking out, and they're like, you know, how do you handle this, blah, 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 and Arthur's like, you know what, yeah, this is what's going to happen, and kind of broke it down for them, and it just kind of shows that, like, you can have people, or you have, like, these preconceived notions of how people are, 
according to how you see them in one situation or one area of your life, and then when you put them in a different situation from the typical or normal situation that you see them in, or scenario you see them in, how it can be so inaccurate and so um, far far from the truth, you know, until you're actually in that situation, you actually get to see them, kind of what they really can do. And so, um, I love art. This is a great series, and it's, it's a series that kids can watch, adults can watch, um, <clears throat> and they just kind of like, that's kind of cool too to kind of see them uh, make fun of like little popular culture things like they made fun of Scooby-Doo, um, that was kind of cool, uh, they made fun of South Park in one episode, they made fun of Beavis and Butthead in another episode, they made fun of Jerry Springer on another episode. There's like tons and tons of like little parodies that they've done. Um, they got that kind of like their own version of Superman, which is Bionic Bunny. They got their own version of Batman, which is like Dark Bunny. And they just have like all these different little things. And as you watch the show, you see more and more of them. You're like, oh, I remember they did this one and they did that one and they did this one. And I like the little episode where they had like the musical. <laughs> We're not so much a musical, but it was kind of like a big kind of music video episode where like just, they all kind of got their own little songs and. It was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, this is a great series, and I've always loved the series, and I think this is a really cool series. And everyone knows what the series is. Everyone knows the theme song, you know, because um, it's just that well-known of a series. It's been on so long. Um, not long since we should, of course. <laughs> but probably since, like, early, early 90s. Um, and now it's 2013. And so it's probably, probably, like, seriously, 15 probably 20 years old, you know, it's an old series, and so, but it's still around, they're still making new episodes for it, which I'm now, and then I watch the newer episodes, and actually not, they're still pretty decent, and so, um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a cool series, I really love it, and hope it's always on, it's just a great series for children to watch, and to learn about the world around, I like how they don't try to, like, um, I just don't, like, over adult size it, but they don't try to like super, super, super candy coat everything, <laughs> you know, it's just like, you know, kind of like, yeah, you know, here kind of is like in a moderated kind of tone, um, like I remember when they did the episode where they kind of addressed the September 11th thing by kind of having their own little kind of mini disaster deal and how the kids dealt with that, another episode, which I was kind of surprised, they actually dealt with cancer, um, kind of head on the effects of how you dealt with someone that you know and you know have known for a long time and then you see them get sick and how you kind of deal with it and how everyone kind of reacts to that differently and you know and also to kind of discuss what happened um during um you know, what happened to the effects while someone's going through cancer treatments and that was kind of um a little heavier for a kid so they did it in a way to where it was something that kids could understand and adults would be interested in Washington. You can learn something from it. And so, um, and it dealt with so many things, like um, they dealt with um, peanut allergies. They have dealt with asthma. They dealt with um, dyslexia. They dealt with um, being the shy kid. They dealt with just, oh, so many topics. Um, even me and Held Back a great, they dealt with that. Um, just so many things that they dealt with, and done just really been a great series, and I'm, and I'm just glad it's on TV, I'm glad that I was able to grow up and have that series as part of my life, uh, it's kind of like, it's entertaining, it's fun to watch, um, it's a little goofy, um, but you learn something at the end of the day, you feel like a really good feeling after watching it, and so, um, that's kind of that, alright, bye.